Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in the Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by The Wellness Way, today we're joined by contributor, podcaster, and co-host Anna DeVere. She's joined by her dear friend, Michelle Lucas. Now, as a proud Space Camp alumni, Michelle is a former flight controller for the International Space Station and an astronaut technical instructor. Additionally, Michelle and a business partner run Unify Space Agency, which is a talent management company for retired astronauts. She's also the founder and CEO of Higher Orbits. With a new focus on inspiring the next generation, she founded Higher Orbit, which is a nonprofit that uses space to excite students about STEM. She runs programs all over the world, encouraging them to find and pursue their passion. Impressively, she's an A1 AA Associate Fellow, a member of the Space Camp Hall of Fame, and the recipient of the first ever Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Alumni Entrepreneur Award. She's going to join me today with Anna to chat about encouraging and uplifting students in STEM, failing forward, and how space really does inspire. Welcome now to the show are my dear friends, Anna and Michelle. Welcome to the show, superstars. Hi, so grateful for the opportunity to be here. I am so excited to talk to my friend and bring her on to iHeart. It's, it's wonderful to have you here, Michelle. Let's dive right in. Michelle, it's amazing to see the trajectory of your career and so fitting that we have this conversation so close to May 5th, which is National Astronaut Day. Now, your journey has been nothing short of incredible. You studied aerospace engineering, communications, and space studies at Purdue University and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And upon graduating, you spent 11 years working at NASA's Johnson Space Center, where you were part of the payload safety review panel. To my understanding, after this, you worked mission control for the International Space Station as a flight controller and then went on to be a technical instructor for astronauts as well as instructors and flight controllers all over the world. You have one impressive career. Now, what was it that inspired you to pursue a career in space at such a young age? Well, if I'm honest, and I have been a space dork my whole life. I had the great fortune of watching the first space shuttle launch on television as a little girl from the south side of Chicago, where people weren't talking about science and, and space. And STEM wasn't even a term back then, right? It was just math and science. Uh, my grandmother had me watch the first space shuttle launch, and I was in love. And from that moment on, all I wanted to do was work in the space industry. Nobody could really understand how to help me find that path. Uh, most people in my area weren't going on to any post high school education, nevertheless, talking about working at NASA. But it was really lucky that my mom was incredibly supportive and through a variety of things, including a scholarship to go to space camp, I stayed in love with space. And so went to university, studied what I thought were all the right things and, and ended up being all the right things uh, to go into a career at uh, NASA's Johnson Space Center and then the follow on things that I'm doing now. You are a trailblazer, my dear. I am so proud of you. The path you've paved is so inspirational, and I know you focus on exciting young students about STEM. And while we've come a long way, according to a report by the World Bank, women make up less than a third of the world's workforce in technology-related fields, with women making up just 35% of employees in STEM in the U.S. So I know especially for young girls interested in a career like yours and achieving your level of success, you are quite the role model. Well, I feel fortunate to get the opportunity to work with these stellar students across the country because it is one of those things that in space, we've actually done a little better than the average with regards to women in STEM. Uh, but there's room for everyone in STEM. And I want students to know there is a place in space for them, uh, no matter who they are. There's a place in space for them. I love that. You should coin it. <laughs> now, Anna, you met Michelle when she gave her TEDx Fargo talk back in 2018. Failure must be an option. Now, the phrase failure is not an option is associated with NASA flight director uh, Gene Kranz as an outcome of the Apollo 13 moon landing mission. And today, this phrase has been taken to new and, quite frankly, toxic levels. In this talk, Michelle speaks to the fact that while failure is never the desired outcome, it must be an option. 
Anna, what inspired you about Michelle's message? Well, I love that you, I love that you obviously watched the talk and, and, you know, to hear Michelle tell it firsthand is, is something, go, go chase that one down. But I would just like to say that Michelle's whole life is an example of how to pivot. I'm not going to say fail because I don't, I don't see it that way. And I know she doesn't see it that way, but from her earliest memory, she wanted to be an astronaut and her mom and several educators did everything they could to promote that dream. What you don't know about Michelle is at age 23, maybe 24, you can correct that. Um, she found out she had kidney stones and not just one. She had a condition that would disqualify her for becoming an astronaut. And what could have been a devastating moment in her life propelled her to go on to have an illustrious career that most people would envy. That to me is the epitome of the right stuff. You hit it right on. It is mm -hmm. the epitome of the right stuff. Now, continuing on with this concept of failing forward, fear of failure is something many people struggle with. In fact, according to Linkagold's Fear Factor Index in partnership with YouGov, one in three Americans were found to be scared of failure, and almost half of the surveyed adults responded that their fear of failure was the biggest barrier to not achieving their goals. So overcoming this fear is absolutely crucial. Michelle, how significant do you find this topic of failing forward to be in today's risk averse world? So I think it's incredibly important. And when we talk about space flight, everybody knows space flight is risky, right? It is rocket science. Space is hard. And obviously, uh, when we fail in space flight, it's oftentimes spectacular. Rockets blow up and that's never a desired outcome. But in the iteration of entrepreneurship, of design, of research that has to happen, we accept it in certain areas, and the space industry is one of those places we've had to accept it. You can't build a great new moon colony or, or a new moon colony, at all, moon colony at all or a rocket without that, but we don't instill that in our students. We make it so everybody gets a participation trophy or, um, oh my gosh, you've got a B, that's terrible. Students have to learn how to fail because they have to learn how to pick themselves up when that happens. And that is one of my concerns is that I see a lot of uh, a lot of snow plows in front of kids, making sure that they can do all the things they want to do without many barriers. And we all know that that's not realistic in the real world. So I'm a big believer in create situations that students can expand their envelope, bre uh, uh, broaden their horizons perhaps not succeed in the way that they thought. So they figure out how to take those opportunities to learn and grow from that. And so I think that is actually one of our biggest challenges with our future STEM explorers workforce in general is helping them understand it's okay for it not to go the way you expected and reframing what failure means. Because just because it didn't go how you wanted doesn't mean you failed. If you learned from it, you didn't really fail. And I know that sounds a little Pollyanna, but that's that's real life. It is. It's very much real life. I couldn't agree more. Now, Anna, you get to be in Michelle's orbit. What do you <laughs> find compelling about her work? Zen, can I just tell you, I love that you do space puns. You and I are kindred spirits. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Being in Michelle's orbit is extraordinary. Um, <clears throat> really, very few people get to take a, an actual peek into that privileged world. And I think it's just her touchstone with re astronauts with true stories that make those stories even more compelling. So I wish that all film directors, TV, uh, TV producers would hire Michelle just to get those things right. That's the funnest part about being in her orbit is just to call her up and say, what'd you think of this movie? Nah, completely false. That's kind of the fun, you know, but um, obviously she has you know, a foundational belief in education and it's the real stories that make the difference. Incredible. Now shifting gears, Michelle, let's talk about your nonprofit, Higher Orbits. So your mission is to use the exciting world of space flight to promote science, technology, engineering, and math, what we call STEM, along with leadership teamwork and communication to students of all ages. Now, I would love it if you could please tell us more about Higher Orbits and the Space Inspired Camp go for launch that you run? Yeah, so I was fortunate as a kiddo that I uh, applied for a scholarship to Space Camp through a very interesting happenstance of ways and got to attend Space Camp in Huntsville, Alabama, and it changed my life. It was the first time I was surrounded by people who were like-minded, who love space. I call it finding my tribe. 
Um, and it kept me on my path at a time that was very difficult. In middle school, I was incredibly bullied um, and I didn't think there were other people out there like me. And so I went to this camp and I found that. Uh, I wanted to be able to bring a space-inspired STEM event to the backyards of students across the country. And so I created Higher Orbits and the Go for Launch program where students get to work with an astronaut for the whole event. And that is unique. And when Anna mentioned the storytelling, I'm a believer in stories. I think the power is in the journey. And so while it's awesome to hear about an astronaut and their flight in space and piloting the spacecraft or doing a spacewalk, what is just as powerful is how did they get there? What is their story? Because it didn't just magically happen overnight and they don't all come from privilege. Actually, most don't. And so hearing that story and sharing that with students is really powerful. So we run this event all across the country. We've done it 75 plus times in 19 different states. And the students work for a couple of days on a variety of team building challenges. We're never solving the rocket equation on purpose, but we're using space as an inspirational platform. I say all the time, there are two things that inspire all kids or excite all kids, I should say, space and dinosaurs. Uh, I know not much about dinosaurs, a bunch about space, so we use that as our platform. Ultimately, the teams of students, uh, they get broken into teams once they get there. They design an experiment that fits inside a cube that's about the size of a square clean of a rectangular Kleenex box that could fly to space. And we've already sent 20 student experiments to the, well, 19 to the International Space Station and one on a swab orbital rocket. Uh, are they all going to be rocket scientists? No. Uh, do I even want them all to be rocket scientists? If that's what they want, yes. Uh, but what I really want them to do is realize that by keeping STEM as part of their pathway, they leave a lot of doors open. And I also want to empower them that they can do whatever it is that they are willing to work hard for and also work on their communication, teamwork, and leadership skills, because that is an integral part of no matter what job you go into. Wow. I mean, you have a great roadmap and this is why your program is so successful i as a parent would love my daughter to participate in this and i think that you are inspiring an entire generation and it's so so much it's it's so there's a gap that you're filling it's very very much needed especially in this day and age well as you mentioned a gap there's there's something called the confidence gap that is a a chasm between what you actually are capable of and what you think you can do. And the earlier we can start to try and fill that for students, the more we empower them to go do amazing things. And, you know, I'll hear people say, oh my gosh, we're in trouble with the next generation, whatnot. And I'm here to tell you that based on a lot of the students I work with, we're not in trouble. There are some brilliant, amazing young people out there. We just have to help them understand their superpowers, if you will. Like what is, what is their passion? What are their talents? Um, and, and help them and mentor them to find their way. I love everything you're saying. Now, Anna, I know you've attended one of Michelle's camps, Go for Launch. What was it like? I'd love to hear about your experience. So she's right when she says that our future is, is, is more, we have more reason to hope than you would think. It's like watching what the kids come up with for these science projects are kind of mind blowing. But I would like to dovetail and talk about the storytelling aspect of hearing from astronauts. I mean, imagine if you learned World War II history from actual combat veterans, listening to stories like astronaut Wendy Lawrence. Uh, I just, my, my mind just spun around. This is in the real now for me. It's not CGI created. It, it's the storytelling that makes this program unique and more compelling than anything else I've ever seen as an education tool. My kid's too young but she participated in the science fair in third grade after meeting Michelle and actually took the whole thing in her school. And I know it's because there's a role model like sitting right in front of her. There's nothing more compelling than that, taking it into the realm of the possible. And she's doing exactly that. Now, Michelle, I really admire how you, you've used your career success to build programs that are inspiring and involving students in STEM. You're, you're building quite the legacy, but I know this doesn't come without lots and lots of work and effort. Now, I understand that you travel a significant amount as part of your work. What keeps you going and what are you inspired by today? Uh, space. Uh, there's, there's, it's not by happenstance that our, our tagline is space inspires. I, I love space and I love what, uh, what it has become. When I started in space a quarter of a century ago, there was only like one game in town. It was NASA and some major contractors. And, and now we have all these different companies who are participating, launching humans to space, talking about space stations that are commercial. 
that inspires me and it inspires me for the possibilities that exist because I, um, me and some of my friends joke, we were either born a little too late because uh, we missed the big heyday of the, the first moon landing in 1969 or a little, or a little too early because of all the burgeoning uh, space economy that is happening. Uh, we're kind of in the middle of it, but like on in this weird space, no pun intended, but the space inspires me and the students do. I mean, it is one of those things that I never, if you had told me this would be my roadmap, I would have told you you're crazy. I never had any intention to go start my own companies. Uh, I had I struggled with the term entrepreneur when one of my friends who is one of the greatest space entrepreneurs ever was like, you're an entrepreneur. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I just started this little nonprofit. This is not that big of a deal. Um, it is exhausting sometimes, but I love it. And I couldn't do what I do if I didn't love it. And so I will uh, do whatever it takes to help make sure students understand the opportunities that exist for them, particularly in space, because it is something that I love so much. And I love I love to be able to share my love of space with others. Very well said. Now, this is a yes or no question, okay? Are we alone? Yeah. I love it. Now, lastly, before we wrap up, and that's another, another interview, <laughs> Anna, any discover your potential takeaways? Yeah, I love that you picked up on all things that Michelle is great at, and that is a great topic for another day. We've actually had that conversation a few times. Um, what I would like to say, though, is that Michelle, while she's a very humble person, uh, she has all kinds of opportunity today. There, there are many people that could be launched into space. It's uh, not as simple as buying a ticket aboard you know, Virgin Galactic, although it, you, you certainly can. But I know this, Michelle will always put go for launch first because it's more important to her to move the needle. And that means developing curiosity in our kids. And so for that reason, she will always be most compelled by helping the next generation of STEM explorers to discover their potential. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Anna, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you for bringing on such a trailblazer to our segment today. Thank you both. Great conversation. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was Discover Your Potential, brought to you by The Wellness Way, and that was the incredible Michelle Lucas. Definitely head to higherorbits.org, or you can check them out on the gram at Higher Orbits. And to learn more about her nonprofit and programs, be sure to check her out on the gram at Space Shell, C-H-E-L-L-E. And of course, see more of Anna by heading to discoveryourpotentialshow.com. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 